Hi guys, welcome back to Play on Pantry. Today I thought I would share with you some of my favorite recipes for the fall coffee creamers, the Christmas and winter. Um, full disclosure, I often drink my coffee black, but during the holiday season I really do like to have some of those flavors mixed into things. But if you buy the drinks at the coffee shops or even the creamers in the store now, it's all gotten so expensive. And they're actually really easy to make at home. I'm gonna show you five here today. I've got two fall, two Christmassy, and a winter-ish one, one I think of as winter. So I'm gonna start with everyone's favorite pumpkin spice. And I'm gonna make it straight into my little ninja here. I've got some, I've got my little small blender and my stick blender set up and ready to go. And I've got some coffee waiting over here so um, we can mix it all. But one of the things I have found over the years of trying my own coffee creamers, when I started trying to make them like 15 years ago, I gave up pretty early on because it was not at all, not at all a, the recipes I was coming across were not at all anything like I was finding in the store, either in a store-bought creamer or in a coffee shop. Um, one, so I've learned quite a few tricks over the years and refined some recipes to the way that I like them. And one of the things is that I have learned, I like to use sweetened condensed milk. So if you want a sweet creamer, pretty much all you need is some sort of milk and some sort of sugar. And so today for all my recipes, I'm using sweetened condensed milk. You can make sweetened condensed milk yourself, this spatula here. If you're a bit of a purist, you could do that. I have done it. It was good. It wasn't hard, but it did take a while. It took like almost an hour, I want to say. It was a long time ago. And I just decided that I would rather buy the can in the store, stock them when they're on sale, and do that. One of the issues I had specifically with pumpkin spice creamer recipes was that they were very grainy to me. And that's why I'm using the blender. One of the tricks I learned over time is that if I put it in the blender, it would just make everything kind of all smooth for me. Because I did not like having that... Um, Get that off. I did not like having that grittiness in my coffee. And it also, I didn't feel like it actually incorporated that well either. So for pumpkin spice, by the way, I will write all these recipes out in the description box below for you. For the pumpkin spice, I have a can of the sweetened condensed milk. And I'm going to do uh, like one and a quarter cups, half and half. Another thing I found over years trying different recipes was that a lot of them were too watery for my taste. I don't want to water down my coffee. I still want to taste it. And so I tend to use a little bit less milk to sweetener ratio than a lot of other recipes do. But uh, and if you want it even thicker than mine, you can do even less milk. So the sweetened condensed milk is about a cup, so it's almost like a half and half blend. In addition to these, which th by the way, this is kind of the basis of a lot of today's recipes right here. I'm gonna use syrup to sweeten it today. I'm gonna use a couple of tablespoons. I like having these liquid measuring cups. You can use a different sweetener if you want, but I, I was trying to stay seasonal here with the pumpkin spice, and I feel like the maple syrup doesn't really taste mapley, but it gives it the right kind of sweetness, if you know what I mean. Three tablespoons of pumpkin, and I'm gonna, I just use canned pumpkin, not pumpkin pie filling, but pumpkin. And I am, um, I had this can open from something else I made earlier this week. I'm just gonna eyeball three tablespoons. That little zhuzh. Okay. And I still have more of that to use. And then I'm going to use, sorry, I gotta wipe my fingers. Then I'm gonna use some seasonings here. I'm gonna keep this out because I have more, more sweetened condensed milk to open today. So I'm using pretty much pumpkin pie spice. So if you have pumpkin spice, pumpkin pie spice, you can use like between one and one and a half teaspoons of it. Um, if you don't, you can just do what I'm doing here and use the same seasonings. I usually have it made up. I forgot this doesn't fit in my jar. So um, a teaspoon of cinnamon, it's gonna look like a lot because I'm using my little quarter teaspoon here. But one teaspoon of cinnamon. Four, one teaspoon, okay? And then I'm going to use a quarter teaspoon each of nutmeg and ginger. I love nutmeg. Nutmeg is my favorite baking spice. I love it. I love the smell of it. I like to grate fresh nutmeg onto eggnog. Mm, so good. 
teaspoon each of nutmeg and ginger, and then just a little bit of cloves, like an eighth teaspoon. Just a little bit less. And then we're going to go for a teaspoon of vanilla. Do you ever notice that it always, recipes always seem to call for a teaspoon of vanilla? This is, this bottle is so old. I make my own vanilla and I've reused this bottle. I think it was from Aldi for like forever ago and it's probably going to need to be replaced soon. This is going to go straight over here into my little ninja and blend it up. And then we'll try it out with some coffee because it's pretty much ready. These are all easy, by the way. It would be super fun to make all of these in like a bar for people, like a holiday little coffee and dessert type get together. I'm just mixing this until all of that sweetened condensed milk has gotten um, incorporated into the milk so it's not too thick by itself. And that pumpkin and the spices aren't floating around being gritty. The pumpkin gets nice and blitheringed in this and then the spices get incorporated instead of floating on top, which is one of my dislikes about some other recipes out there. Okay. And then it is ready already that fast. Let's take this towel off. I've got some coffee ready here. Okay, I got my cup. I'm gonna get some coffee in here. I'm leaving room for my pumpkin spice creamer. Mix it up. I like mine a light tan, but you can do whatever color you like, whatever strength you like. Bon appetit. Mm. It is the perfect fall day for this. I'm looking out the window and the trees are changed, mostly at their peak. Leaves on the ground. It's raining for the first time since the hurricane and we needed the rain. I could sit here and watch all day but I really want to get started on the next one. So let me clean this up and I'll meet you for the caramel apple. Okay, this next one I'm really excited about. This is caramel apple crisp. And I mentioned in a previous video that when it comes to the fall flavors, when everybody is going all crazy for the pumpkin, I'm there for the apple. I'm team apple. I like pumpkin, but apple is to me the quintessential fall crisp comforting. I just love apple. So, Caramel Apple Crisp took me a while to come up with. <laughs> I'm starting with apple cider. This is an organic honey crisp cider. Um, I often use cider from a local apple house, but they did not have, they don't have it in stock yet this year. So I just got, I think I got this at Aldi. I'm not positive. I'll try to look it up for you. I'm using, I'm starting with a cup and a half of the apple cider. This one, to get that apple flavor, I am using um, mostly apple cider for the flavor and the sweetener. I'm not using the sweetened condensed milk in this one, and I'm using actually very little cream. I'm only going to use a half a cup of the half and half. This took me a long time because I really wanted a lot of the apple flavor in the creamer and not a lot of similar recipes out there will do that for you. I lied, I am using sweet and condensed milk. So I've got the half and half, the honey crisp cider. I was like, I was looking at my recipe there and I was like, that's wrong. I did use a so I do use a can of sweet and condensed milk in this. I am gonna put this in a quart jar so I can put the stick blender in it to mix this one up. I need my spatula. So the sweet and condensed milk helps with the caramel flavor in this, not just the sweetener, because one of the things I tried when I was coming up with a caramel apple recipe was to actually like try caramel. Um, I tried um, melting caramel candies. I tried the caramel um, ice cream topping type things. And it was just really hard to work with as far as getting the flavor right without too much sweetness and without having to use too much. It seemed like to get it caramel, you had to use a ton of it. But caramel actually starts as like milk and sugar, which is what sweetened condensed milk is. So it, it works out well flavor-wise for that. So in addition to 
the cider and the sweetened condensed milk and half and half, I'm doing um, some cinnamon and vanilla is pretty much all that's left. I'm gonna do a half teaspoon of cinnamon here. A lot of the fall and winter flavors have cinnamon. I should probably just leave the cap off of this. Okay, half teaspoon cinnamon, we'll leave that there. And then a teaspoon again of vanilla. Need to refill that. Okay, so I'm gonna keep this in the jar and I'm gonna take it over to my stick blender and just zhuzh it up in there. Again, I'm looking for that sweetened condensed milk to mix in with the milk, and I'm looking for those, the cinnamon and stuff to be in it, not floating on top of it. <laughs> Made a bit of a mess. That's okay. That actually happens in here quite a bit. Messes are cleanable. Okay, let's get this one going. Get some coffee in. I like a lot because <laughs> I like to taste those flavors I'm adding to it. Y'all, if I wanted to be super, super crazy with this, I would take some whipped cream and I would sprinkle in some of that instant apple cider mix. You know what I'm talking about? I think it's like Alpine brand. You can get it at Walmart in a box. It's a packet. It's kind of like hot chocolate, but it's hot cider. I would mix in like a half teaspoon of that into some whipped cream and put it on top. Maybe a little apple slice for garnish if I wanna be super fancy. And that's fall. Sometimes I will add an apple extract, like a green apple flavoring. I used to have, I don't have it anymore. But this is really good. You guys ready to move on to the Christmas flavors? Okay, for the next couple, what I'm gonna do is I'm actually make my basic mix with my sweet and condensed milk and my half and half first. And I'm gonna use I'm going to make about three cups of the mix and I'm going to use it in my next three creamers. Ooh, that just popped right up. I am making smaller amounts. I'm going to store them in these jars. And the next ones use a lot of mixes of spices and extracts. So in we go again with our basic mix of sweetened condensed milk, which I'm making a mess with because that's how I roll. All right, and then I'm going to use about, around about two cups of my half and half. And um, I'm looking for three cups all together, which is on, actually on my jar right here. It's this line right here. So, um, so I'm just gonna pour it straight into there. Whatever it takes to get up to three cups with the sweetened condensed milk is what you need. And I'm gonna take this over to my stick blender and mix it up and then I'll be ready to do all three of these. So here's what I'm doing. The first one is going to be eggnog. And eggnog, it was my, it was one of my favorites, but it took forever for me to get the eggnog one down because I kept trying to use eggnog itself, which I still will make an eggnog latte with just, I use a milk frother and froth up eggnog and put really strong coffee in it. About half and half is how I like it. That's a different story. It's not a creamer. It's a latte. Um, especially since I think Starbucks stopped carrying the eggnog latte. I haven't gotten Starbucks in a long time or I rarely get it. So sometimes I'm not aware that they don't have anything anymore. But what I finally discovered was when I came across an actual recipe for eggnog, it has rum in it, duh, and some, some spices. So what I found was it was actually just easier to use rum and nutmeg and that is all that's in this besides my main mix here so um, this is my favorite butter it's butter rum flavor is the one I like and it is I can link it below um, I'm gonna use a half teaspoon of it got a teaspoon measure here so I'll go eyeball half and then I'm going to use a quarter teaspoon of nutmeg again my favorite <sighs> Okay, and then I'm just gonna use a cup of my main mix here. It smells like eggnog already. 
It smells like it already. I was so glad the first time I found it. All right, I'm going to blitz it up to get that nutmeg in there. It doesn't take much. This is my favorite winter one, y'all. My husband is the peppermint mocha fan, but I am the eggnog fan. Mm, yeah. All right, for the next one, let's do peppermint mocha, and it is the only one that we have to go to the stove for, and I'll explain why in a moment. For the peppermint mocha, the reason we have to come to the stove is because I, after spending forever trying to figure out how to do the peppermint mocha, I decided that the best way, according to my taste, was actually to use chocolate itself not cocoa powder not chocolate syrup those just made cocoa powder was really hard to incorporate and not sweet enough chocolate syrup is too sweet i haven't tried dark chocolate syrup that might work so i put a cup of my basic mix in here of the half and half and um sweetened condensed milk and i'm going to put about a third of a cup of dark chocolate chips i get these at aldi because I like them for my chocolate cravings. You could use a semi-sweet baking chocolate, third of a cup-ish, I'm eyeballing. And I'm just going to melt it down in there. So this one tends to be a little bit thicker because the chocolate is melted into it. And I'm, I'm just heating it until it's melted. I'm not trying to like boil this or simmer it or anything. It's not a long process. It does take a minute though, because that, half and half is cold. And then once I remove it from the heat, I'm going to add in peppermint extract and that's it. That's very simple, three ingredients, dark chocolate, the mix, well, I guess it's four ingredients because the mix has two, and then um, the peppermint extract and we're done. Okay, we're already done here. That was like maybe three minutes. I'm just looking for that chocolate to get dissolved and incorporated into the milk. It almost looks like hot chocolate at this point. Okay, this one, because it has melted chocolate in it, it does get a little thicker in the fridge. When I get down to the very bottom of the jar, I microwave it to thin it out a bit. All right, peppermint extract. I'm just going to use a half a teaspoon. This stuff is really strong. Don't need much. And then stir this up just to get it incorporated. And I like to actually use quite a bit of this with my coffee. I make my coffee stronger and use quite a bit of this and make it good. You guys, it even smells pepperminty and wintry in here. Oh, the smells in the kitchen today. Mmm. That is so fresh and pepperminty. I feel like I should be standing at a Christmas parade right now. You could totally put whipped cream on this and some crushed peppermint candies. It would be great. Last one, though. On the home stretch. Okay, for our last creamer, we're gonna do a French toast. I thought this would be a great mix of kind of wintry because it's got like the cinnamon and the warm comfort food flavors, but not necessarily a holiday one. I'm starting with my last cup of my mix that have my sweetened condensed milk and my half and half, and I'm gonna grab some extracts and other flavors real quick. I'm gonna grab vanilla, cinnamon, pinch nutmeg, almond extract and I'm going to get maple syrup out so maple syrup is not in French toast necessarily but it is what a lot of people put on top of French toast if you don't like the whole syrup angle I would use like a quarter cup of brown sugar in its place um, that would still play very well with the flavors and give you that same French toast profile without the maple syrup because some people don't put syrup on theirs so to my mix I'm adding a teaspoon of vanilla that was the last of it. Perfect teaspoon, need to refill that. And a teaspoon of almond extract. Now normally I would say that's a lot for almond because almond's pretty strong, but in this case it's actually not, it's perfect. Almond extract, a half teaspoon of cinnamon. And a pinch of nutmeg. Mm. 
and a couple of tablespoons of maple syrup. I like about two tablespoons. And I'm gonna put this, get it mixed up over here. Okay, let's try this one out. This is just a good winter snow day. I think that last time I had this was in January of this past year when I was sitting on the couch. Remember I had slipper socks on, it was snowing outside and I was just watching it out the back. So we've got like sliding doors that go out to the back patio. Mm. You could totally put whipped cream on this, just like all of them, sprinkle some cinnamon sugar. I would actually stick a little square, if you want to garnish and look, look pretty, I would stick a little square of cinnamon toast crunch in the whipped cream. That is good. I don't know which one's my favorite. I really like apple. I really like the eggnog one. The eggnog one's probably my favorite. Anyways, those are my five favorite whole holiday season creamer recipes. Remember that I will put the recipes, the measurements in the description box below for you. Thank you guys for joining me today. I hope that you enjoy at least one of these and I hope to see you on the next video. Mm -hmm.